A long time ago, Liu was suffered from relentless chaos and war between gods. The bodies of the defeated would sink into the rocks and soil of Liyue to be forgotten, but their evil essence and bitterness would continue to contaminate the earth below, festering for years until it once more rose to become perilous demons. These demons took the form of disease, monster infestations, and all other scourges that would plague Liyue. This continued on until the Geoarchon Rex Lapis summoned the illuminated beasts to help him protect Liyue. There were a particular group of beasts, however, which were more dreadful in appearance and were even more brutal than the demons they fought. These beasts would be given the special purpose of defeating these demons exclusively. They would be called the Yaksha. The strongest five of these Yaksha would be forever renowned as some of the most formidable beasts to ever exist. But it was not long that these Yaksha roamed the lands, for as they continued to slaughter the demons day in and day out, they too would start to become demons themselves, until they became so afflicted they gave into their rage. They fought amongst each other, gave into madness, and after a thousand years of servitude to Rex Lapis, only one remained. It's said that during the springtime nights around Diahua Marsh, you can hear the sweet notes of a flute hovering above the reeds in the wind, but there's no flutist to be found. Hark, they say, the lone Yaksha who lost everything calls to summon his old friends to their homeland once more. So who are these Yaksha really, and why did they all perish? Let's get into the details and try to answer, what are the Yaksha? To understand the Yaksha, we have to understand what it is they were protecting, Liyue. The history of Liyue is very long, and I could make a very long video on just Liyue itself, but to give you the cliff notes, Liyue, or rather the land that would become Liyue, has been a war-stricken area for a long time. Gods have fell and fought and died in Liyue since long before the Archon War ever happened. But it was during the Archon War that Morax called upon the Illuminated Beasts to protect Liyue. These beasts took on the title of Adeptus, and I have a video on the Adepti already which I encourage you to watch first. But there was another echelon of these beasts, some more fearsome than the rest. And it was these beasts that Morax took aside entitled Yaksha, whose role was specifically to fight demons in Liyue. And as I mentioned before, these demons are essentially the manifested anger of dead gods. These gods would fall and sink into the land, but their hate and anger would never cease until eventually the negative miasma built so strongly that it manifested in many different forms. It could have been disease, monsters, you name it. We see this presently in Inazuma with the curse of Orobashi, so it's not a strange or new concept that gods' rage can afflict the people of the land. It is actually quite common of an occurrence, and it seems that many of the monsters in Tevet are quite frankly the result of gods killing each other. It really puts things into perspective. The strongest of the five Yaksha would be Morax's right hand. And for a thousand years, all of the Yaksha would roam the land fighting any evil they could manage. But it was in this act of fighting relentlessly, brutally, and savagely, and the Yaksha themselves would start to accrue the negative karma of the demons they so tirelessly fought. There's that age-old saying, either you die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain, and this couldn't be any more true when it comes to the Yaksha. Despite the fact they were doing good deeds by saving the people of Liyue, it would eventually infect them. Imagine if all you did was kill demons without break. It eventually wore away at their psyche until they gave into rage, madness, and fear, when eventually they had fought amongst each other, and there was none left except for our lone Yaksha, Xiao. Well, there is one more Yaksha, and that is Bosatius, who we have a quest about and learned that they actually did not succumb to madness and fall. Where exactly they are, no one knows though it's highly likely that Mihoyo is saving this character for a later reveal. The most famous Yaksha we all know is Eladis, the conqueror of demons, eater of dreams, 
Golden Wigged Knights, Bane of All Evil, the Vigilant Yaksha, or his name given to him by Morax, Shao. He is the only surviving and last Yaksha. He now protects Liyua from the shadows, only getting involved when absolutely necessary, continuing on the task of his fellow Yaksha. Shao himself is 2,000 years old, and he was not always a Yaksha. Originally, he was in fact enslaved by a god who forced Shao to carry out his evil deeds, one of which was for Shao to actually eat the dreams of his victim. This is how he earned the title. This was up until Morax actually freed Shao, and giving him his name that we all know. But despite the fact that Shao is the last Yaksha, that doesn't actually warrant him any safety. He still fights demons and can be lost at any time. This actually almost happened to him up until Venti saved him. It was a moment where Shao was fighting in the reed fields from dusk till dawn. With not but an ounce of strength left, he picked up his spear and began to trek home, with no real home to go back to. This was when his strength began to waver, and the limitless hate flooded his senses and he was beginning to slip into the darkness that took over his fellow Yaksha. But it was then, that in that mere instant, the pain subsided. He had been rescued by the sound of a flute, a clear, lovely sound which came down the mountains and rivers until it reached his ears, giving him just a moment of peace from the agony and violence. And as we know, the person who saved him was Venti, so it's highly likely that the story we hear in the beginning is actually the tale of a time when Xiao was almost lost that was written in the volumes of Liyue. For now, while Xiao endlessly toils against the leftover demons and Tevats, he can at least find some solace in the company of a traveler and the new home in the Wangshu Inn that was allotted to him in the story quest Act 1, Part 3. So although there are no promises of fame and fortune, it is decidedly a job of utter thanklessness that Xiao still defends Liyue with all his heart in thanks of Morak saving him. I hope you enjoyed the video. Xiao is honestly one of my favorite characters and it was really enjoyable to make a nice video on his lore, even though it is kind of depressing. I apologize for the delay since my last video. YouTube is not my primary job, so I work outside of YouTube and I can't often work on videos as often as I would like. If you did like the video, feel free to leave a comment if you feel like I left anything out or if you just want to add to the discussion. You can also join the Discord with the link in the description where you can talk with me directly, suggest future videos, and I also like to get input from my fans and subscribers on the next video, and I like to showcase the development of the videos I'm currently working on. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. But as always, thank you for watching.